Chapter 1481 Conceit If you've always had this power, why did you pretend to be so weak? Hansen asked. Elysian Moon shook her head. I never really pretended, but I had a way to increase the strength of my Elysian umbrella. It can temporarily possess the strength of a super geno core. That time is quite limited, so I saved it until I got to the main battleground. I would have preferred to die out there rather than use it before reaching this point. I am appreciative to you and Zhuodong Lai for bringing me here. Hansen didn't say anything in return. He hadn't minded helping her at the time, but the fact she had been lying to him all along made him angry. The Legion Moon wanted to say something more, but Hansen's missing Gino core lit up. A door of light appeared in front of him, indicating it was his turn to fight. You are a human that cannot respawn. There are so many elites here. If I were you, I wouldn't join a pointless fight such as this. Elysian Moon looked at Han Sin and offered advice. I don't like pointless fights. You're right about that. That's why I need to get the God Geno Core. To nullify the pointlessness of my current participation, Hansen said coldly. He walked into the open doorway and then appeared out in the arena. Elysian Moon said to herself, I'm sorry, but I have to get the God Geno Core no matter the cost. After that, Elysian Moon turned to look at the arena. His opponent was Red Dragon. She frowned. Red Dragon is better than an Emperor. It looks like Hansen had bad luck. If he ever hopes to win this battle, it'll cost him a lot. That's good though. I'd hate to end up being forced to suck him into my umbrella. Hansen saw Red Dragon, and Red Dragon saw him. They froze, and then Red Dragon bore a wry smile. It's bad luck for me to meet you again in my first round. Hansen smiled and did not say anything. Red Dragon shook his head and went on to say, I was probably going to lose, anyway. I suppose it isn't all that shameful to lose against Sky Sword, of all opponents. After that, Red Dragon decided to concede and exit the battleground. Red Dragon was like an emperor. He was a very famous individual amongst the spirits. Everyone was shocked to see him not even bother to fight, and simply concede right away. As shock swept the audience, everyone wondered who his opponent had been. Elysian Moon was shocked, too. It surprised her a great deal that Red Dragon had conceded like that. She had no idea what was happening. Hansen walked back out of the light door and sat back down in his seat. He wasn't going to say anything to her, so Elysian Moon asked, Why did Red Dragon concede? Maybe I'm just lucky? Or perhaps he thought I was too handsome, and he didn't want to scar my beauty? Hansen smiled. Elysian Moon didn't believe that, of course. Although Red Dragon was an emperor, he wasn't the strongest. As such, she didn't dwell on it too much. There were many elites entering the arena to fight after that. Regardless of whether they were creatures or spirits, each one of them was very powerful. When Six Pads entered the arena, Elysian Moon's face changed. Six Pads Emperor is here. You said you were going to win. Does his presence here matter? Hansen mocked her. Six Pads is different. He doesn't have a super geno core, but he has the body of an emperor. Now not even I am able to guarantee a win. Elysian Moon spoke with grave sincerity. Hansen licked his lips but did not respond. Elysian Moon was evil, but she wasn't a fighter. Even if she had a super geno core, he didn't think she had the fighting talent to back it up. And that didn't just apply to her fighting six paths Hansen wagered she wouldn't win, even if the two of them had to battle. It didn't matter how strong a super geno core was. The wielder himself had to be powerful. Elysian Moon was not super class in body, and she wasn't much of a fighter. She couldn't depend on the strength of the Super Elysian Umbrella entirely. Not many creatures were able to enter the main battleground, and after a few more hours passed, the first round was over. The second round would begin soon. The creatures that were defeated could not fight again, as they were disqualified. The winner of each previous fight were the ones who could go on. Elysian Moon was up for the next fight again. Her umbrella was incredibly strong, and she was able to suck the super creature she went up against into her weapon as she did before. The image of that same super creature then blazed across the top of the umbrella. Who is that female spirit? She is so strong. If I am not wrong, she has the Elysian powers. The Elysium used to be the best in the fourth god sanctuary. The Elysium were once that strong? Why have I not heard of them for many years? Back then, there was a horrible battle. Many old families went into hiding, and Elysium was one of them. I think it is either Six Paths or this Elysium spirit that will get the god Geno Core. I'm just here to watch, more than anything. I know I don't stand a chance. 
It's scary. That super creature air, with a gemstone geno core, was defeated by the umbrella so easily. Can six paths really beat her? If I end up facing her, I'll just concede. Who knows if I can respawn at my spirit stone if I end up getting sucked into that umbrella? Everyone was discussing Elysian Moon's performance, having all been shocked by her display of power. Not long after, Hansen was up again. When he saw his next opponent, he was shocked. What is happening today? Another one I already beat? Hansen licked his lips. It was Sumi who was frozen. When the audience saw Hansen and Sumi, the excitement across the stadium rose. Hansen was the human who had made Red Dragon concede. Sumi was the son of two emperors. He was very talented and extremely famous amongst the spirits. Now that they were to square off, everyone was ecstatic for the prospect of an exciting battle. I wonder which one of them is stronger? Sumi for sure. He's the heir of two emperors. I've heard his powers are abhorrently strong. His gemstone Geno core allows him to do battle with super creatures. Why are so many elites appearing here at once? It is difficult to determine who will end up obtaining the god Geno core. Chapter 1482 Sword Skills of a God Seeing Hansen's opponent was Sumi, Elysian Moon frowned and said to herself, Sumi is far too powerful. If Hansen is hit, I don't think he'll even have the time to concede. If I was him, I'd turn tail and run right this second. In the arena, Sumi approached Han Senator he hadn't drawn his weapon, and the spirit just looked at the human and said, A human once told me every man has a price for everything. How much are your sword skills worth? What would you accept as payment for teaching me your technique? After Sumi said this, everyone was shocked. The son of two emperors who was really famous wanted to learn the fighting techniques of a human. It was almost too shocking to comprehend. For one super geno core, I'll teach you anything, Hansen said. Okay, but I cannot bring a super geno core here. When we leave geno core battleground, you can seek me out and furnish shelter. If you'd prefer, I can come find you in a place of your determining. Sumi immediately agreed to this, and it seemed Hansen's sword techniques were deemed more valuable than a super geno core. The people in the audience were all in shock. Not everyone could obtain a super geno core so easily. Many creatures toiled and struggled across the years to get their one, Soul Super Geno Core. Now Sumi wanted to swap Hansen's sword skills for a Super Geno Core. It made everyone want to know what Hansen's talents were and why they were worth such a Geno Core. I'll find you in Furnace Shelter when I have the time, Hansen said randomly. Sumi's agreement actually came as a surprise. But it made Hansen feel as if the kids of emperors were typical spoiled rich kids and unsure of the actual value of items such as a super geno core. So, if this business is concluded, let's fight. Hansen said, as he drew Taya. Fight? If I was able to beat you, I wouldn't have to learn your sword skills now, would I? I concede. Just remember, come and find me in furnished shelter, Sumi said casually. If the audience had been surprised by Red Dragon's concession, then they were completely floored as Sumi conceded and exited the arena. Elysian Moon's face contorted. She had never imagined something like this could happen. While we were separated, what did he get up to? Elysian Moon thought she had come to know Hansen, but again, she was now feeling like he was a stranger. Hansen returned to his same seat. Elysian Moon didn't say anything and just looked at him instead. She never thought he'd actually be able to compete, and her expression was growing more serious. Even Sumi, the son of two emperors, conceded to him. She was feeling a lot of pressure now. The spirits and creatures around the bleachers all had their eyes on Hansen and Elysian Moon now. They were all talking about them, despite the fact those two were silent. Hansen had won twice without needing to fight. Everyone was getting an idea of how powerful he must have been, but Hansen didn't think this was of much help. To get a god Geno Core, Hansen would inevitably have to go through Elysian Moon and Six Paths. If he was lucky, Elysian Moon and Six Paths would have to battle each other first, leaving Hansen with only one to deal with. The fights would go on until there was a winner. The Phantom Doors continued to light up, beckoning fighters into the arena. Whoever found themselves going up against Six Paths or Elysian Moon surrendered and conceded immediately, with much fear for their life. Hansen was not so lucky, though. Although all the combatants knew his name as Sky Sword, many of them still wished to witness his true strength. A super creature in the third round sniffed Han Sen and decided to concede, but on the fourth round, the king spirit he faced did not want to give up. Sky Sword, huh? 
I want to see if you have what it takes to wear such a fancy, self-loving title. You really think you are the strongest swordsman in existence? The spirit drew his own sword and lunged towards Hans Sr. I never said I am Sky Sword, Hansen said tiredly, pulling out his own sword to do battle with the spirit. Hansen didn't like the title Sky Sword, either. It sounded old-fashioned and stiff. He much preferred the title Dollar, because that at least suggested he was rich. The spirit swung his blade in a flurry that looked like a thousand simultaneous strikes. The entire arena was covered in those slashes, and a bid did not give Hans in the space to dodge. The spirit was called 100 Swords, and his Geno core was 10,000 Swords. He had been born with very powerful AoE skills. 100 Swords heard Hansen had beaten Red Dragon and Sumi, so he knew his opponent's sword skills had to be formidable. If this was a case of sword skill versus sword skill, there was a chance he'd be the weaker of the two. But he had the 10,000 Swords Geno core, and with its spread, it did not allow Hansen to use his sword skills. It forced him to fight his opponent with strength. Seeing all the swords coming at him, though, Hansen was not afraid. With Taya primed, he was more than ready to fight back. Hansen needed his sword skills to win, but that was only for Sumi Sumi's sword was too strong. So Hansen had to beat the spirit with movements. 100 swords had a gemstone Geno core, but it was weaker than Sumi's. As a result, Hansen did not have to dodge. Dong. Hansen's Taya blocked every sword that came close. He didn't flinch once, and he managed to approach 100 swords amidst that barrage. With Hansen's strength, he wouldn't be at a disadvantage against any gemstone owning beings. The audience had only heard Hansen's skills were strong. They had yet to see him in action with their own two eyes. Now, seeing Hansen fight 100 swords the way he was, they were able to understand why Sumi was willing to pay the price of a Super Geno core to learn Hansen's techniques. Aside from the first attack, 100 swords was unable to make another. All his skills were successfully cancelled, and if he kept going, he was going to end up on Hansen's sword. Hansen's sword skills seemed almost able to predict the future, like the wielder was a god. At first, Hansen's attacks seemed to be missing anything critical. But after seeing 100 swords' strike, they noticed the move set was nothing short of miraculous. Every one of Hansen's attacks was for the future, and this godly sword skill shocked everyone to see. After witnessing its capabilities, no one thought a Super Geno core was too expensive a price to pay. It's AF Asterisk King Bargain. If I had a Super Geno core and an affinity for the sword, I'd pay up to learn a sword skill as godly as this. Chapter 1483 Waiting for you to defeat me. 100 swords couldn't correctly cast 10,000 swords on Hansen, and without further ado, he conceded and abandoned the battleground. Although Hansen won, it wasn't a scary and unsettling victory like Elysian Moon's wins. When Hansen reached the next round, all his opponents decided to fight until there was no choice for them but to concede. Hansen's sword skills were very suppressive. He couldn't kill his opponents in one hit, so there was no need for any of them to truly be afraid. This did give Hansen the chance to practice more and more with the technique, though. All his opponents were super creature or king spirits, and fighting against them challenged his proficiency with the sword skill. It did not matter what the abilities of his opponents were, as Hansen could change his move set on the fly to respond appropriately. While his strikes changed a lot, the base of the skill was still focused on his formation and judgment. Elysian Moon was scared watching him perform this way. Hansen was using Ghost Sword. It wasn't perfect, but somehow, Hansen's version of Ghost Sword was far better than her original one. It was more than just better. In fact, Elysian Moon thought to herself, why is Ghost Sword not that effective when I use it? If it was this good, I wouldn't have to rely solely on my Elysian umbrella. After many more opponents were defeated by Hansen, many creatures and spirits were willing to approve and respect his title of Sky Sword. When Hansen entered the arena next, everyone was shocked. His opponent was none other than Six Paths Emperor. This is a shame. If Hansen was super class, he might have been able to fight Six Paths. As he is now, he does not stand a chance. They met far too soon. I wanted to see more of those sword skills. They were so amazing. Everyone believed Hansen was going to lose. His sword skills were powerful, but they were still inhibited by the strength of his body. When a fight was down to power and speed alone, the versatility of his sword skills would not be of much aid. Elysian Moon felt great relief, 
Seeing Hansen square off against six paths Hansen was sure to lose, she thought, and that took one of her most feared opponents off the board. Elysian Moon was confident in her umbrella, but Hansen was so strange to her. She thought it would be best if she could avoid him, at all costs. It would be great if Hansen was able to beat Six Paths, however. She still considered Six Paths to be her greatest foe there. Hansen gave a wry smile, seeing Six Paths as his opponent. He understood his foe, and also acknowledged there was a 90% chance of the spirit winning. Six Paths' sword skills rivaled his own, but the spirit's fitness was much higher than Hansen's. This fight was sure not to last very long. Six Paths looked at Hansen and smiled. I know what you're thinking. I want to see you defeat her, as that would most certainly be an interesting watch. When Six Paths said that, he immediately exited the arena. Everyone was shocked. No one expected Six Paths to be willing to concede in the way he had. And he had clearly been referring to Elysian Moon in his brief dialogue. Six Paths quit for him? That is surprising. Is he really Six Paths' opponent? He didn't look up to Scruff. You don't know much. When you're strong like Six Paths, finding a worthy opponent is quite difficult. It's natural for him to treat the human nicely. I thought the Elysium woman was stronger. I didn't expect Six Paths to respect Sky Sword that much. Six Paths sounded as if he was very confident Sky Sword would triumph. Six Paths gave up his opportunity for Sky Sword. If he doesn't win, even after that, it will be very disappointing for them both. Elysian Moon felt a wash of relief. She didn't like what Six Paths had said, but she was glad she could avoid battling Six Paths Emperor. The biggest obstacle to her obtaining the god Gino core was now out the way. This was good for her. I didn't think bringing Hansen here would yield such a benefit. Elysian Moon looked at Hansen with a complicated expression. Then she thought, what kind of human is he, for even the likes of Six Paths to treat him with such respect? The next battles were boring all in the anticipation of Hansen and Elysian Moon's upcoming fight. The spirits against Hansen all gave up, just eager to get things over with and watch the fight they were hyped for. They thought Hansen's chance to win was low, initially. But Six Paths Emperor believed Hansen could make it, and this had them doubting their own expectations. Because the creatures and spirits that met Hansen and Elysian Moon all gave up, it wasn't long before the two were facing each other on the grounds of the arena. I never thought the biggest obstacle between me and the god Gino core would be you. Elysian Moon sighed. Hansen said coldly, It's too late to regret this. You should not have brought me here. Elysian Moon shook her head. Bringing you here was not my choice. You know it was Gu Chiching. She said you were better than Ghost Moon, and she was right. If it was Ghost Moon, I don't think I'd be here right now. But even she could not foresee you would end up being my opponent. What is your relationship to Gu Chiching? Hansen asked, but he didn't expect a reply. Elysian Moon didn't want to answer this, either. She opened up her Elysian umbrella and pointed it at Han Sr., that which is absorbed by this umbrella does not survive. Not even spirits can respawn. You have helped me a lot, and I do not want to kill you. I am getting that god Gino Corp, though. You should quit now while you have the chance. Didn't you say I shouldn't join a meaningless fight? This entire event would be pointless if I quit now, Hansen replied. Hansen had watched the umbrella for a while. He figured that she must possess the powers of space. She could suck creatures and spirits inside and refine them once they were held in the umbrella. Hansen had practiced space hypergeno arts before, so he was familiar with the idea. But he had never tried to fight something like that before. He didn't know whether or not his prior experience would benefit him here. The easiest way to win would be to use his Super King Spirit Mode as the umbrella suction probably wouldn't work when that was active. Unless it was absolutely necessary, though, Hansen was not going to use his Super King Spirit Mode in front of everyone. If you really want to fight me, then don't say I didn't warn you, Elysian Moon said, her tone growing chilly. Then, she began spinning her umbrella. The umbrella began to glow, and as it spun, the dimension it occupied began to swirl. Hansen immediately felt a strong suction pulling his body towards the vortex. Chapter 1484, Battling Elysian Moon The vortex was so strong. Hansen tried his hardest to resist, but he was still being pulled towards the umbrella. He was going to be sucked inside. The creatures and spirits saw Hansen unable to resist, and they felt it was a great shame. A great sore master of spectacular skill was going to die before his prime. But just as they watched Hansen about to get sucked into the umbrella, 
He disappeared in the blink of an eye. Everyone thought he had been pulled inside, but he hadn't. He reappeared right next to Elysian Moon, with his sword poised to cut deep into Elysian Moon's throat. What happened? How did he escape? I couldn't see it. No one knew how Hansen had pried himself away from the suction of the Elysian Umbrella, and even Elysian Moon herself was surprised. She had no clue how he had slipped out of her pull. Elysian Moon gritted her teeth and spun her umbrella. She stumbled back in a hasty retreat, aimed the umbrella at her enemy, and tried to suck him in again. In another flash, Hansen had appeared directly next to Elysian Moon, behind the umbrella. With its face not pointing towards him, he couldn't get sucked inside. It was then that everyone noticed the dimensions of space around Hansen had become somewhat distorted and warped. It was like he was able to teleport directly towards his opponent, and the umbrella had been rendered useless. Is he employing the powers of time and space? Does Sky Sword have a rare time and space elemental attunement? A spirit, upon recognizing Hansen's amazing power, found himself in complete awe. Time or space alone was rare to see, but to have both of them together was far beyond that. It was rarer than winning the lottery. Across the history of the fourth god sanctuary, only a small handful of creatures and spirits had possessed both the powers of time and space. Coincidentally, they also happened to be the strongest known. But Hansen was not naturally talented in both of these. His time and space element came from the spirit geno points he received in the third god sanctuary. It might not have been as effective as those who were naturally talented with such boons but he could still briefly teleport through space with Ghost Slash. This short-distance blink could not take Hans in a distance further than one meter, and while it would have been ineffective against those who had only space but were all natural, it was enough for him to evade the suction of the umbrella. But Ghost Slash wasn't enough for him to wholly escape the suction, truthfully. It was because Hansen's body was not strong enough, and he had yet to reach super class. As such, Ghost Slash was not enough to compete against the Umbrella completely. With Hansen's observational skills, though, he was able to tell the Vortex sat on the surface of the Umbrella, and the suction power was strongest towards the center. Whenever Elysian Moon used her Umbrella, she'd point the center directly at her enemy. Hansen wanted to prove whether or not his theory was correct. So, when the Umbrella was facing him, he shifted his position to its side, and only allowed the side of the Vortex to grip him. Hansen felt a strong power pulling on him. Yes, but the teleportation ability of Ghost Slash allowed him to easily escape that manner of suction. Now that Hansen had witnessed this, he knew the umbrella couldn't deal with everything. This flaw would allow Hansen to keep on top of it. Hansen could see now that Elysian Moon was no greater than Sumi. A little bit stronger, maybe, but that was all. Sumi's sword was small, and it had a limited range. Therefore, Hansen was able to dodge fairly easily. Elysian Moon's Elysian Umbrella had a longer and wider range, and it was therefore just a little harder to deal with. Hansen did not get annoyed easily when he fought, so he patiently sidestepped around, staying mobile to avoid the center of the umbrella. Elysian Moon noticed that Hansen's teleportation ability was rather weak, though. She swung her umbrella, trying to grab Hansen with the vortex's center point. If she was able to do this, her umbrella would have enough grunt to pull and finish Hans Sr. But she suddenly made a mistake. She shouldn't have let Hansen get close, for he was able to keep on getting near after that. He was at her side, he was behind her. Elysian Moon was able to respond and keep away, but she had no clue where he'd appear next. She was unable to target him the way she wanted to. The suction at the brim of the vortex would hardly snag Hansen, and it was impossible to catch him and draw him into the umbrella. The spirits watched the scene with weird feelings. All they could see was a child holding a gun, firing willy-nilly, failing to hit the man that was next to her. It made them think they were watching an adult play with a kid. Of course, they knew they weren't playing. And if Hansen made a mistake, he'd surely die. But for reasons unbeknownst to themselves, they weren't worried for Hans Senator they knew he wouldn't fail or miss. Elysian Moon was getting annoyed. She was unable to point the center of the umbrella at Hansen, and the human sword was slowly pushing her towards the edge of the arena. Suddenly, Elysian Moon stopped and did not allow Hansen to push her any further. She turned and ran straight to the wall of the arena by her own volition. The reason why Hansen could fight was because of his strange movements and his constant reappearances around her. She couldn't use the center to aim at Hans Sr. If she went up against the wall, 
Hansen would be unable to use this same tactic to avoid her, and she'd be able to beat him with ease. The spirits and creatures acknowledged what she was going to do, and for this, they now started to worry about Hans Senator if she put her back against the wall. Hansen would be unable to attack her. Elysian Moon was currently 10 meters away from the wall. If she reached it, Hansen would lose. But for her, in the heat of that moment, it felt like a great distance away. All she had to do was take two steps. That simple dash felt like an impossible mission for her to accomplish. Hansen used his Dong Shin Sutra and Ghost Slash. When he teleported, he started to attack a strange spot. It was like he was deliberately missing her. But when Hansen moved, and she moved, it suddenly looked as if he was targeting her in a weak spot. Elysian Moon was right in front of the wall, but she felt as if there was a countless number of barricades and corners she had to traverse to get there. She had to turn to move forward, lest she crash like a car. The barricades were Hans Sin and his sword. Elysian Moon was still using her Elysian umbrella, but she was unable to hurt him. She was being controlled by Hans Sin like a puppet on strings. She couldn't get close to the wall, and it now felt as if she was moving further from it. These sword skills are like those of a god. Red Dragon couldn't help but blurt out a compliment. Chapter 1485, Elysium God Body Emperor, it is no wonder you selected Han Sen, Sumi said as he sat next to Six Paths. Six Paths shook his head and said, This is only half of his true adeptness with the sword. Half of his sword skills? Sumi looked at Six Paths with confusion. Six Paths looked at Han Sr. The core of his talent with the sword does not rely on the sword skills used, and he can use knives, spears, or even his hands with the same result. The sword is merely another tool for him. If you actually want to learn what he knows, you'll need your own god. Otherwise, you won't get what you seek, and you'll simply lose yourself. Thank you for the advice. I will remember this, Sumi said. Down in the arena, a lesion moon was getting desperate. The sword skills were suffocating her. She recalled what he was doing, as it was something he had learned directly from her, but she couldn't block a single strike and nor guess where the next would be coming from. The sword cut down across her shoulder, forming a cleft through her white skin. Her fitness had not increased, and it was only her Geno core that had elevated to become super class. Elysian Moon looked to be in poor condition. Never in her worst nightmares did she envision Hans and being her greatest obstacle, prohibiting her victory. Not even her super Elysian umbrella had what it took to deal with him. Hansen, I'm telling you again, quit now before I kill you. I am getting the god Geno core, no matter what, Elysian Moon said stumbling backwards. That's my line, Hansen responded coldly as his hands refused to halt. Dodging the umbrella and attacking her this way, Hansen was not in a rush. It looked as if he was just playing a game with her. You forced me to do this. Elysian Moon appeared to have made a decision, and she looked incredibly cruel. Hansen's heart jumped, stricken by a sudden worry. Her eyes turned blue, like two gleaming moons. Their brightness increased, brighter and brighter. As this occurred, he noticed Elysian Moon's life force growing stronger. It was unbelievably strong, as if she had injected a crazy stimulant. Did she take a stimulant? Hansen frowned as he looked at her. Her powers were growing stronger, and with her Elysium umbrella, her power became incredibly scary. She was feeling like a real king spirit now. How did she do that? She can increase her fitness to the level of king class? Sumi said with shock. Six Paths coldly responded. The Elysium have remained hidden for too long. It seems far too few recall their Elysium god body. It looks like she has the true Elysium blood. Without that in her veins, this change could not be triggered. Elysium god body? Is that their special ability? Sumi asked. Not really. Elysium king emperor had this ability, but not many heirs were able to contain this power. Six pads explained. What kind of ability is this? How do you suddenly raise your fitness to such a level? Sumi asked. Six Paths looked at Elysian Moon and said, Elysian King had another name. He was called the God of Death. Elysium God Body enables the Elysium God to possess her. Their Elysium God is not an actual God, mind. But their power exceeds most emperors. Elysium King. Emperor used this power to kill six emperors. But after that, he started to lose. If he was that strong, then does that mean Hansen will lose? Sumi asked. Six Paths smiled. Maybe not. Elysium God body is strong and Elysium God was strong. Before I self-destructed, I might not have won against him. 
To be possessed by Elysium God will swiftly drain your body, though. Elysium King Emperor, when he used Elysium God, could only last like so for a single day. He managed to kill six emperors, but by that point, he was unable to withstand the power of the Elysium God and had to self-destruct. Elysian Moon's fitness is nowhere near Emperor class. Such a weak body won't be able to harness the Elysium God power for long. Her time in such a condition is very limited. I think she needs to stop before she tries to possess all that power. If she becomes entirely possessed by Elysium God, she'll only succeed in blowing herself up. But even if she is not fully possessed, Hansen won't be able to survive an attack like that. Surely. The Elysian Umbrella, if fueled by that power, will wipe him out in a single strike, won't it? Sumi then asked Six Paths, do you think Hansen still has a chance? I don't know. Usually, I wouldn't think so, but he's a special guy. Maybe he will make it. Six Paths looked at Hansen with tingling interest. Sumi gave a wry smile. What Six Paths said meant he was basically hoping for a miracle to show up. In the arena, just like Six Paths said, Elysian Moon started her attack before she was fully transformed. She moved her umbrella, using it to face Hans Sr. The power made the vortex spin incredibly fast, and Hans Sin was unable to react. He wished to dodge, but his body was too slow to do so. Hansen felt the suction grab hold and pull him in. He used Ghost Slash, but he was unable to escape the suction. He was still getting pulled towards the pinwheel umbrella. With Elysian Moon's power increased like that, the suction was far stronger. It wasn't just the center, either. Even if he was at the side of the umbrella, he wouldn't be able to escape that pull. This was the benefit of a self geno core. The power changed in accordance with the master's body, unlike those that were simply collected. Those didn't change regardless of the state of your body. Hansen used a few different powers to attempt an escape, but nothing worked. The suction was too strong, and over the course of the next moment, he was sucked into the vortex. Everyone was shocked. An elite like Hansen had been pulled into the Elysian umbrella, and it told them no other spirit or creature could hope to compete with her. After she sucked Hansen into the Elysian umbrella, she stopped the Elysium god possession. Although it had not been finished, that short amount of time was enough to crack her body. If she kept going, she would have surely died. As she stopped Elysium God body, her flesh became a webwork of cracks. Rivers of blood coursed down her body, and she looked terrible. Chapter 1486, Real Blood Power If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have had to do that. Elysian Moon endured her painful and weakened state, speaking to the surface of the umbrella. She wanted to take a look at Han Sen's image, but she froze in shock when her eyes noticed its absence. Elysian Moon was stunned. She rubbed her eyes to get a better look, but there really was nothing. The umbrella was plain, and there wasn't even the image of a single bone atop it. The audience looked at the surface of the Elysian umbrella the same way, thinking it to be strange. They knew what it ought to have shown, and they were just as confused at not seeing the expected picture rest atop the umbrella. Suddenly, something red appeared on the umbrella. It was like a flower that was blooming rapidly. The color red was spreading quickly, dyeing her entire weapon red. Even the handle of the umbrella was beginning to get consumed by that rampant color. Elysian Moon didn't know what to do as she watched the renegade coloring reach towards the hand with which she gripped the umbrella. She had no clue what this was, and she couldn't stop its spread. She couldn't risk contact with it, so she simply let go and dropped the Elysian umbrella. As the umbrella fell through the air, it continued to turn red. Before it hit the ground, the red color had consumed it completely. Blurk. Some blood spilled from Elysian Moon's mouth. Her eyes opened wide, unable to believe her airborne umbrella had turned red. The umbrella had practically been destroyed. Her connection to it had been severed, and this breakage caused her to sustain an even greater amount of damage. The Elysium God power had already severely injured her, and now, with this, she found herself barely able to stand. The red umbrella then began to spin by its own volition. A vortex appeared, one that was red, and from inside it, Hansen jumped out. As he did, he turned and allowed the umbrella to fall neatly into his hand. Everybody looked at the scene with mouths firmly agape. They looked at Hansen, umbrella in hand, in absolute shock. They had no clue how he had avoided being consumed by the umbrella and had actually ended up taking the entire weapon off her. Hansen looked at the umbrella and then pointed it down at her. The umbrella began to spin again, 
and its suction power pulled the original master into the spooky vortex. New. Elysian Moon blurted out, amidst her shock. Before she could finish, though, her entire body had disappeared into the vortex, alongside her voice. Hansen stopped its spin. Now an image appeared atop the umbrella, one of the green loath woman. It was her. Everyone was in shock. No one expected things to turn around so quickly, and in a manner such as that. Elysian Moon had been winning, and all of a sudden, Hansen took the umbrella off her and sucked her into it instead. It was such a grand table flip, none knew what to think. Hansen had entered the Elysian umbrella, but before he went inside, he attached his real blood geno core to the umbrella. Hansen had spent a lot of time researching the blood ability of the real blood geno core. If it touched an object, the object would be infused with Hansen's blood and fall under his control. Real blood geno core had many limitations, and it didn't even do anything on its own. If it wasn't attached to anything as it just had been, it'd be completely useless. And its control was not permanent, either. If Hansen took the real blood geno core away, his control over an item would vanish again. Hansen didn't know much about its temporary control, and he was still in the midst of researching other abilities it might possess. Hansen merely wanted to try it, though, and see if the real blood geno core could control the Elysian umbrella. There was quite a gulf and level between the two, so he didn't even expect it to work. Real blood geno core had worked better than he imagined it would. When the geno core was on the umbrella, it swiftly melted into the weapon. He didn't even have to activate his super king spirit mode. Elysian Moon and the Umbrella were taken over by Hansen, and after that, nothing happened in the next battle. His next opponents all decided to give up when they faced him. When Hansen walked to the next arena, there was no opponent, but in the center, he found an altar. The altar exuded a holy light like a delicate spring. Beckoning Hans Senator, the light came towards him, but it did not come for him directly. It went towards the missing Geno core he had used to enter. The Geno core floated before Hans sound caressed by that holy light. It started to change, taking on the appearance of a butterfly, just like the Firetail Butterfly King it originally was. When the Geno core was filled up by that light, it became alive. It became a butterfly, and it fluttered towards Hansen's forehead, entering his sea of soul. Obtained God Geno core butterfly. Hansen checked out the butterfly Geno core in his sea of soul, and he noted how it looked like a Firetail Butterfly King, despite it not actually being one. It wasn't a fire element Geno core. It was glazed with ruby, but it wasn't attached to the element of fire. Got Geno core, super butterfly. Hansen saw the level of the butterfly and immediately became super happy. It was a complete super Geno core, his first ever. God Geno cores were practically self Geno cores, but they weren't. Still, their abilities were quite similar. God Geno cores were like self Geno cores in that, if they were destroyed, they'd be rebuilt inside the owner's sea of soul. The strength of a god Geno core would be affected by the master's strength, too, much like self Geno cores. But there was something else that was different about them. If a god Geno core was destroyed, the owner wouldn't be damaged, as would happen with a self Geno course. The god Geno core event was finished, and the main battleground was shut down. Everyone was forced to leave, made to return to the Geno core tablet they had entered from. The Legion Moon had been dealt with and Hansen had obtained a god Geno core. It was a surefire victory for him, but it made him think of something. After he left the Geno battleground, would he be returned to the Elysium Shelter's Geno core storage? And if so, how would he escape from that place? If Elysium knew he was the one who had killed Elysian Moon, they'd undoubtedly want to fight him. And it was likely Gu Qingxin would kill him. It'd be great if I could end up elsewhere. Hansen sighed. He knew it'd be impossible, in some way or another, he was going to have to face Elysium and Gu Chichen. If he didn't get through it, he'd die. Chapter 1487 Back to Elysium. Zhou Donlai really was waiting for him, right outside the Geno Core tablet. He was waiting for Elysian Moon to come out. He had realized that she had tricked him, and so he wanted to grab hold of her and ask her questions whenever she decided to emerge. But then, all of a sudden, the tablet began to shine. It wasn't Elysian Moon that appeared. Instead, it was a number of strong spirits and creatures. Zhuodong Lai's face changed, and he immediately turned around and tried to flee. The creatures took off after him. As they were following, they shouted out, Are you Zhuodong Lai? Did that be asterisk TCH Elysian Moon call on all those foul beings to kill me? 
D asterisk a minute. Zhu Donglai was both scared and angry. He thought a lesion moon had sent them to dispose of him, so he just kept on running, refusing to respond. Why are you running? I asked if you were Zhu Donglai. One of the spirits behind shouted again. I am not Zhu Donglai. You fellows made a mistake, Zhu Donglai shouted in response, not slowing down his feet the slightest. He was so old, he did not care about his name or reputation anymore. At that age, he only cared about survival. How can you not be Zhu Donglai? You look just like the description Sky Sword gave us. You must be him. The spirit on his heels did not believe Zhu Donglai's dismissal and kept pursuing him. Sky B asterisk TCH. The spirit must be referring to a lesion moon. I hope she knows how cheap she is, he thought to himself. Then, still at top speed, shouted, I really am not Zhudong Lai. And I don't know Sky Sword, neither her brother Earth Sword. You guys must be mistaken. I swear. I know I'm not wrong. You have to be the one. Sky Sword told us to look for someone who was old, ugly, and had the beard of a goat. I don't see anyone else out here that looks like that, the spirit said. F asterisk CKU. You're the old and ugly one. I'm what you'd call vintage. Zhu Dong Lai was extremely angry at hearing the description. When Zhu Dong Lai looked at the horde closing in, he thought it was all over. As the group spread out behind him, a few more came forward to his front and sides. He was entirely surrounded. It looks like I, Zhu Dong Lai, will meet my end here. It's a shame there was nothing I could do to kill that B asterisk TCH. Zhu Dong Lai accepted his fate, knowing he could no longer run. He went on to say, Come on. If you want to kill me, I'll still take you all down one by one. You'll pay for this. The spirits and creatures looked at him like he was a strange mad ant. The spirit that had been calling after him in the pursuit then said, Are you insane? Who said we were going to kill you? Sky Sword said that if we saw you, we should help take you back to the teleporter. What nonsense are you going on about? Zhu Donglai was shocked. He thought he had slipped into a strange dream, and he said, Um, who is this guy be asterisk start? And why would they want you to escort me? Isn't he your friend? He said you were his friend. That's why we wanted to help you. Are you sure you're Zhu Donglai? All the spirits looked at the funny man in confusion. Zhu Donglai then waved his hand and said, I am. But I don't know who this sky be asterisk start is. Hmm, let me think. Zhu Donglai retreated into his mind. Who would be retarded enough to call themselves Sky Sword? I don't know who that is. Whatever, I'll admit who I am first. That'll help me stay alive, at least. Oh, yeah. Sky Sword said his real name is Han Sen, the spirit added. Zhu Dong Lai opened his eyes wide and said, You guys have been talking about Han Sen? Again, Zhu Dong Lai thought he was dreaming. Guarded by the spirits and creatures, he was escorted back to the teleporter. Then, he was able to return to his garbage shelter. Maybe I'm getting too old. I didn't expect the young ones to be able to befriend or affect the attitude of spirits and creatures in such a way. It looks like humans might find their place in the fourth god sanctuary soon, after all. Zhu Dong Lai thought it was amazing. Hansen said goodbye to six paths and the other spirits, then returned to his own teleporter, as that would be the only way he could leave. He investigated the butterfly Geno core as he went. If he was getting into a fight, that'd be his biggest support, for sure. Butterfly Geno Core wasn't associated with the fire element. After the holy light he had witnessed in the main battleground, the missing part was fixed and something changed. The Butterfly Geno Core was like a ruby, but there was a blue fire symbol etched onto it. It looked rather beautiful, and Hansen thought it to be one of the prettiest Geno Cores he had ever seen. The abilities of this Geno Core were very obvious to see, though. He wouldn't have to spend much time researching it to find out what they were. The butterfly Geno Core could land on Han Sen and grow a pair of butterfly wings for him. It was different than a flying beast soul. The butterfly wings could fly, yes, but they could also provide him a bounty of additional power. It would give him the strength of a super creature. It's no wonder it's a god Geno Core. It's incredibly strong. After Han Sen tried the butterfly Geno Core, he found himself quite surprised. The butterfly Geno Core meant he could make battle with super class enemies. His strength and speed wouldn't be too far behind, whatever the case. Maybe I really can escape from Elysium Shelter with this thing. Hansen molded over. Hansen reached the teleporter and compiled all his ideas on how to proceed. He stepped onto the plate. The teleporter was activated, 
and the dimension before him twisted. A second later, he was back in Elysium Shelter's Geno Core storage. Hansen immediately saw a lot of the Elysium there before him. Most were there, actually. Gu Qingcheng was standing two meters away from Hansen, I staring right at him. Where is the holy child? Do you remember what I told you? If she lives, you live. If she dies, you die. Don't dare tell me she didn't make it. Gu Qingcheng peered at Hansen coldly. Hansen looked at all the Elysium around. His brow stopped on Gu Qingcheng's face. He summoned the red Elysium umbrella, opened it, and showed them the picture of the green loathed woman. Are you telling me this is the holy child? Hansen said coldly. Why would she be inside the umbrella? All the Elysium were in shock, as was Gu Qiqing. She stepped forward to grab the umbrella. Don't move. One step further, and I will destroy the umbrella and your whole child within. Hansen shouted menacingly. How dare you? exclaimed many of the Elysium. The power of their shouts was enough to level a city. Chapter 1488 the power of the butterfly Gino core. Ignoring the angry crowd of Elysium spirits, Hansen drew Taya and swung it at the Elysian umbrella. Stop! Gu Chiching shouted. It was not loud, but it quelled the roaring of the spirits. The area around the Gino core storage platform went quiet. Hansen stopped Taya midswing. Leave the umbrella and release the holy child. Do that, and I will let you live. Gu Chiching looked at Hansen and spoke slowly. My life is my own. I don't need your protection. If you want my life, then come, Hansen said, then stepped outside the Geno core storage. The Elysium wished to stop him, and without saying a word, Hansen lifted his sword over the umbrella again. Back off, Gu Chiching shouted at the spirits. Then she said to Hansen, Do you really think you can escape Elysium shelter? I would like to. But if I can't, the holy child dies with me. Hansen looked fearless and he continued to walk with the umbrella and his sword drawn. The Elysium bosses didn't want to leave him be, and they stared at Hansen with anger. Hansen continued walking forward, heading towards them. Step aside. Let him through, Gu Chiching said shortly. Master, the umbrella feels like the holy child's umbrella. But it doesn't look like it. Perhaps this is all a trick of some sort, suggested an Elysium boss. Yeah, even if that was the real thing, no human can destroy that umbrella. We can't let him go, another boss stated. All the Elysium began to shout again, deploring the idea of letting him go. Hansen was shocked. At least Elysian wasn't lying when she said that she had an enemy in Elysium shelter. It doesn't seem as if these spirits like her very much. She's definitely not the most reliable hostage to have. Gu Chiching said quietly, Why doesn't one of you become master of the shelter and replace me? No, we wouldn't dare. The Elysium spirits were all in shock and they responded as quickly as they could. They obviously feared her. Then what are all doing there? Yu Qingqing's expression looked grim as she glanced at the spirits blocking Hansen's way. The Elysium parted to form a path, prompting Hansen to sigh in relief. While he could now proceed, he still kept his guard up. He maintained his grip on the umbrella and his sword. Under the gaze of all those Elysium, Hansen slowly walked away from the Geno core storage. When he took another step, a creature suddenly appeared near him. It was a white snake, and it came lunging towards Hansen with a snapping maw. The Elysium were delighted at the sight. The creature, while it was motionless, had the ability to become entirely invisible. That invisibility would disappear as soon as the creature moved. So it had waited until Hansen came within range before trying to bite him. Hansen's body flashed red as ruby butterfly wings appeared on his back. His tail gleamed crimson like a laser beam and with the greatest of ease, he sliced the monster's head off. Its blood squirted through the air like a shower of flower petals. The Elysium spirits had been stepping up to support the creature, but they were shocked into motionlessness again. They stopped their advance, not expecting Hansen to possess such power. The beast was a super creature. Its body might not have had the highest fortitude, but it would require the strength of something superclass to triumph over it. The fact that Hansen had just cut its head off with such ease was a revelation of his true power. Super creature alien beast killed. Beast soul gained. Geno core unobtained. The flesh of this creature is inedible, but you may harvest its life Geno essence. Hansen was so happy. The butterfly Geno core was far stronger than he imagined it to be. The red light was able to kill super creatures, and while the super creature's defense was fairly weak, the result was still surprising. And after that swift kill, 
The last thing Hansen expected to receive was a super beast soul. You obtained the god Gino Core? Gu Chiching snapped out of her daze and finally asked Hansen the question. After Gu Chiching said that, the rest of Elysium awoke from their shock, too. Hansen had been very weak when he first came there, and now he had suddenly become very strong. The reason he had so much power must be because he obtained the god Gino Core in the god battleground. But even so, they found it a struggle to believe such a thing. There were so many elites there, and Elysian Moon had gone there on the heels of intense preparation. How human had managed to beat such odds was incomprehensible. I do want to try out the extent of the god Gino Core's power. I wonder if this thing can actually allow me to break the umbrella. Hansen walked over to the headless corpse of the fallen alien beast and collected its life Gino essence. Hansen continued walking. The Elysium spirits watched him with conflicted expressions. They wished to stop Hansen from leaving and attack him, but they found themselves too afraid to do so. They didn't stop Hansen leaving, but they did not move from their positions. The Elysium all just stared at Hansen, looking as if they were ready to fight. After Hansen exited the Geno Core storage, the spirits and creatures had begun to slowly surround Hansen from all sides. If they found the opening they wished to find, they'd tear him to shreds. Hansen continued to move forward, watching the subtle movements of each being there in his mind's eye. If any of them moved his way, Hansen was ready to react. The way Hansen walked kept them from finding an opportunity to attack, though. But there were too many of them, and Hansen couldn't keep track of them all. Whether they attacked ultimately depended on their collective bravery. Fortunately, Gu Chi Ching was still in command. With her there, the spirits were unlikely to disobey her order to leave Hansen untouched. But when Hansen had reached the shelter's door, the spirits decided not to let him go any further. They assembled at the door, barring his way. Master, you can't let him go. If he leaves, it would be profoundly embarrassing. And I think the holy child will die. He won't let her go even after he leaves. If he is kept here, perhaps she will stand a chance, an Elysium spirit said angrily. The other spirits were in agreement. They did not want Hansen to depart, either. Chapter 1489, Chaos Inside Elysium I told you to move. Did you not hear me? Gu Qingqing's face darkened. The Elysium wore cloaks that obscured their faces. They lowered their heads and did not vocally object to her repeated command, but still, they did not move. Standing where they were, they were blocking Hansen's exit. It looks like the politics of Elysium Shelter are quite complex. Gu Chi Ching is not 100% in charge. And because Elysian Moon isn't all that popular, my hostage isn't invaluable, Hansen thought to himself. Gu Chi Ching, you are the master of the shelter. You should think about the Elysium. If the human can simply walk out so boldly, how can we expect to survive and maintain our strength in the Fourth God Sanctuary? A voice echoed across the shelter, and the spirits then divided their ranks to form a path. A spirit with a gray cloak and a black staff was approaching. When the spirits saw him, they bowed and exclaimed, The big priest. Why is there another big priest here? How many priests do they have? Hansen looked at him and frowned. Strangely, Hansen could not detect a life force from him. It was as if he was inspecting a dead man walking. Gu Chiching, seeing the spirit, frowned and said, Priest. This is my business. I don't need your lectures. The priest laughed quietly. I, Ghost Holy, followed Elysium King in the Fourth God Sanctuary for an untold number of years. We engaged in many battles and became the priest that nurtured many holy children. Elysium is my life, and nothing is more important to me than upholding all this. Even if you were the leader of the shelter, if you ever tried to do something to embarrass me, I would forbid it. Then what must be done to avoid this embarrassment? Yu Chiching said, looking at Ghost Holy. Elysium will not be threatened by humans. We must kill all who try, the big priest said. You would really prefer Elysian Moon to perish? Gu Chiching looked at him with disdain. The priest was fearless in his response. Every holy child of Elysium must attain further glory for us. If they fail, even they cannot be allowed to embarrass us any further. If they cannot be saved, dying for the betterment of Elysium is the most glorious thing they can attain. What if I have to let him go? Gu Qingqing looked at the priest implacably. You want to let him leave? Over my dead body, the priest said with a modicum of cruelty. Gu Qingqing looked at Ghost Holy before addressing Hansen again. Leave now, and I will see to those who might dare stop you. Hansen knew this would be his last chance for freedom. Elysian Moon, 
being a hostage, only seemed to affect Gu Qiqing. He listened to what she told him and proceeded on towards the gate. But the spirits at the gate did not part for him, and Hansen realized they were most likely going to side with the priest. Hansen was going to walk right in front of them. If the crowds did not part for him, he'd have no choice but to swing his sword. But before he did, another powerful sword cleaved through the masses to form a way for Hans Senator. Many of the Elysium spirits were instantly annihilated. Hansen was shocked by the sudden spectacle. He turned around and saw Gu Qingqing's hand grasping a green sword with the delicateness of a fairy. The strike had come from her. Gu Qingqing, do you dare to kill those of Elysium? Do you truly think we fear you? The priest was enraged by her actions. He brought his staff down on the ground as the Elysium-born powers began to rise. You guys were afraid of me for two years. Isn't this rebellion a little late? Gu Qingqing said icily. Fine, Gu Qingqing. I will let you witness the true power of Elysium. Kill the humans. None will be leaving Elysium shelter today. The priest raised his staff as the entire shelter was consumed by a void of nothingness. Hansen understood now that it was the priest who controlled the spirits truthfully. The spirit stone inside the spirit hall statue had to be his, no doubt. When the order was received, the eyes of all the spirits became frightening. Their bodies all turned gray, as if they were hell-raised minions. The Elysium did not have an elder, but there were many king-class spirits amongst the horde. Twenty of them had super geno course, while the rest had gemstone geno course. The power they unleashed was wretchedly powerful, and it even made Hansen a little nervous. Fighting individual king spirits wouldn't be difficult for Hansen now that he had his butterfly geno core. But their numbers were so grand, getting out would still prove a major problem. Hansen put away his useless umbrella. He summoned his bulwark umbrella instead, determined to use that alongside Taya. He was ready to fight. Hansen watched another strike come from Gu Qingqing's direction. It was so bright, and it slammed right into the gate. The gate had been hewn open in two, kicking up a murky haze from the debris. The way outside was now clear. Get out of here, Gu Qingqing shouted. She didn't say his name, but Hansen knew she was speaking to him. His butterfly wings glowed red as he started flying out of the shelter through the curtain of fog. Gu Qiqing, how dare you? The priest was further enraged. His body exuded a horrible aura, and he swung his staff towards Gu Qiqing. Some of the king spirits took off after Hansen, following him out of the shelter. Hansen did not stop, and with his butterfly wings, he employed the grace of his phoenix techniques. But the king spirits were incredibly fast, and his evasive maneuvers weren't losing them. Elysium's shelter was shaking with thunderously loud noises, as if the entire place was falling to pieces. Most of the Elysium, and the priest, had been locked inside the shelter. She is so strong. Who is she? Is she really a human? Hansen was shocked by it all. He did not think a member of Blood Legion could be that strong, either. Hansen didn't have time to think about such things, though. Right now, he was flying fast. He rushed forward, determined to return to the underworld. Gu Qiqing had appeared before him in the underworld before. She was not of the Elysium, and so it was highly likely those who were would have to abide by the Hundred Tribe deal. If they did not follow the rules and break off when Hansen entered the underworld, Dark Spirit would have no choice but to teach them a lesson. There were six spirits coming after Hansen, all king spirits wielding Super Geno Course. Chapter 1490 Entering the Underworld Again All the pursuing spirits were from Elysium, and while they were all around the same power level, their geno cores were very different. Two of the king spirits were using swords. One used a feather, one wielded a knife, and another used a copper cauldron. Hansen couldn't see what the sixth spirit was using. He simply waved his hand beneath a cloak, which dropped a thick mist across a dozen miles of landscape. It consumed everything, including Hans Sr. The radius of that fog was too wide for Hansen to escape. While he was inside, his Dongshin aura was also suppressed and dampened by the mist. This made him feel uneasy. Hallucinations could not confuse Hansen, but this mist carried a phantom pressure with it. It weighed on Hansen and slowed him down. The six king spirits, each with their horrible weapons, all managed to catch up due to this. The fight was going poorly for Hans Senator. It was fortunate he had the powers of his god Geno Core and a number of airborne talents for maneuvering. He also had the Dongshin Sutra and Phoenix techniques. Hansen was only just managing to hold his own. He kept getting beaten back, and he began to collect injuries. 
Luckily, all his weak spots were okay, so he wasn't in any danger of dying just yet. But after a long time of such fighting, death would be inevitable if things did not change. Hansen decided to use Super King Spirit Mode to see if he could do something about the mist, but just as he was about to, he heard a familiar voice. Daddy. Hansen turned around. The mist was too thick, and all he could make out was the sight of something small approaching. He eventually saw a beautiful little girl crawling through the fog like a rocket. Bauer. Hansen was both surprised and delighted. He had no clue why she was there, and neither did he have any idea how she'd found him. Dad, I missed you. Bauer looked happy now, and she leaped back into Hansen's arms. Hansen caught her, but this act distracted him from the battle. And with that opening, a king spirit was able to deliver a firm slash against his back. His blood sprayed through the cleft in his armor. Hansen resumed the fight, all the while trying to escape. Bauer looked incredibly angry. She raised her pudgy arms and summoned her gourd. Then, she pointed it at the mist that was veiling all. The mist was then sucked away, like water that had been drained. It all vanished into Bauer's gourd without issue. Blurk. The king spirit that had unleashed that mist spilled out some blood. The other king spirits were angered by this, and their furor only heightened. They raged at Hansen with greater ferocity. But Hansen was happy. He felt the burden of the fog lift, enabling him to flap his wings and soar into the open sky. He could not lose the hounding of the king's spirits, but at least they couldn't catch up to him. Bauer, you are a good daughter to have, Hansen complimented her as he flew. Bauer cockily responded, Bauer is dad's best baby. The Elysium spirits, unable to catch up with Hansen, tried to use their swords to stop him. But Hansen's movement was better than the king spirits, and everything they tried to do missed. They couldn't slow him down, not even for a second. The slashes ended up wreaking havoc on the ground below, as if it was the end of the world. Hansen ignored them, though, and he just kept up his escape. He'd earned no benefit from battling them, and with the risk involved in fighting them being as large as it was, Hansen didn't fancy doing so. The king spirits really wanted Hansen dead, though they weren't keen on the prospect of giving up the chase. They chased Hansen for a few days, until he was able to reach the underworld and fly through the tunnels and caves of the place. The king's spirits stopped at the entrance of the underworld. They were clearly afraid of something, and they weren't going to follow him any longer. It looks like this place belongs entirely to Dark Spirit. Should we continue our pursuit? One of the king's spirits asked, frowning. The other king's spirits hesitated, but one said boldly, of course. He is not of dark spirit, so what is there for us to be afraid of? We can't let him escape. And if we fail to kill him, what can we tell the priest? After that, the king spirit entered. Clenching their jaws, the others followed him. When Hansen saw the Elysium king spirits following, he was delighted. The landscape of the underworld was complicated. It was perfect for him to make the most of Heavenly Go and the Dongxian Sutra. If he used the terrain to his advantage, it might even be possible for him to kill them there. But Hansen, after thinking about it some more, decided not to attempt to kill them immediately. He was going to go to the place where the Shell King had died. He remembered the hordes of scary creatures that had gathered there. So, there was still a chance he could use them to aid in the fight against the King Spirits. If he was lucky, he could end up hitting two birds with one stone. Hansen traveled for a while, but he didn't see any creatures. There were no super creatures or creatures of lower classes either. That's weird. Where did they all go? Hansen ran towards the fallen shell king, but there was no sign of a creature there. Hansen flew past the shell, planning to proceed onwards to Dark Spirit Shelter. If Dark Spirit discovered they had been invaded by Elysium spirits, Hansen could pretend to be Ling Mayer's subordinate. If he pulled that off, it did not fare well for the spirits that chased him. When Hansen flew over the shell and glanced down into the big hole at its top, his heart jumped. A dark purple pincer flashed from the hole like an excavator. The teeth-laden pincer almost nicked Han Sr. Hansen looked inside the hole where the pincer had come from, and he could see more. A dark purple crab was crawling up into the light. Hansen did not know since when the Shell King's body had been claimed by the crab. But the crab, after coming out of the shell, immediately encountered the king's spirits that were still in pursuit. The pincers moved so fast it looked like they were teleporting and the crab tried to grab two of the king spirits. The spirits had not expected something so big to be lying in wait beneath them. When they noticed the pincers coming towards them, they had to use their swords to block. 
Dong. The Super Geno Core weapons, fueled with Elysium power, came crashing down on the pincer. But the strikes did not even leave a mark. They only succeeded in making the creature even angrier. The eyes of the crab gleamed with a purple color and obvious bloodlust. Next, the crab gathered itself, then hurled its entire body forward. The pincers were going for the king's spirits at a blisteringly quick speed. 